is where we are right now. This is our mobile chicken coop, our egg mobile. You might hear us refer to it as both. And uh, this has been a labor of love, but something that will really, really be a huge help here at the farm because we are going to be moving our chickens from their current habitat where they are one of our smaller pasture and building this mobile coop will allow us to put them on our big pasture, have them moving around from time to time, fertilizing that land, getting fresh grass and kind of living their best life. So before we toss it over to Dragon, who has been the master builder behind all of this, uh, we'll walk you around just to show you kind of some of the things that we're doing. The dimensions of this coop, it is 16 feet long by eight feet wide. And uh, we have our door here at the front. We have our nesting boxes on the back that we'll walk around and take a look at. But uh, when all is said and done and this thing is fully completed, it will be able to house about uh, two to 300 chickens in it. Chickens won't live their entire life in this thing. They'll be out throughout the day, out on the pasture, eating and roaming and foraging. And this will just kind of be their shelter at night and also offer a place for the hens to go in and lay. While most of the framing that you see here was wood that we had to purchase, uh, one of the great things about our property is you've seen a lot of our projects, these boards that are here, that we use on our flooring was all reclaimed wood that we had here on the farm. So we love repurposing things, trying to make the best use of stuff and trying to work within a budget as much as we can. Dragon's gonna come on around on the back, give you a little quick shot of the nesting boxes that we have here. We have 16 nesting boxes on the bottom, 16 on the top to give us a total of 32 nesting boxes. Easy access, great height for us to be able to just kind of reach right in from the backside to grab those eggs throughout the day or when it comes time to collect them. We are putting a couple of doors here so that we can just pull down and not have to go into the coop or go into the coop for limited reasons um, as needed. Again, this roof up here, the shingles reclaimed from here that was left on the barn and then trying to be resourceful using some bags from our rabbit feet here as flashing material to help with waterproofing the backside of this structure here. That's a quick and dirty overview. I'm gonna to toss it over to Dragon and he's gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the design for this and why we're actually adding it to the farm as well. Don't you guys hate it when he just tosses it at me without any warnings or anything? But anyhow, so here's what we've done so far. Kevin did a great job at explaining most of it. Um, things to mention, this is a very old uh, frame wa wagon frame, hay wagon, sorry, hay wagon frame. Um, it was only had a, just a frame, basically two axles and a beam in between. We added those uh, 10 by 10 beams to uh, increase the height of this so the entire structure is above above the wheels so we have the clearance above the wheels so we can actually expand that to eight feet what we what we did uh, entire floor is sitting on two by six boards they're pressure treated so that should uh, that can hold quite a bit of weight there Kevin already mentioned floor uh, why is it designed this way uh, the, this, we used the reclaimed wood to make this floor, but we made about an inch and a half gaps between the boards, so any manure that happens here while hens are inside, it will fall right, fall right through, or majority of it will fall right through and fertilize the ground and minimize the need for cleaning in the school. It will still need to be cleaned maybe once or twice a season, but not as much as our stationary coop that we clean now most every two, three weeks or once a month. So um, up top, we added chicken wire that will stay open for ventilation of the coop. Since we're gonna have so many chickens in, we're gonna make sure that you have great ventilation for them so it will prevent any respiratory issues with chicken. Uh, what else? So oh, we have the already metal sheets that are right behind Kevin, if Kevin can turn around here. Whoever he purchases this, it's gonna be a 
all white goob so you want to reduce also overheating for inside during the day when they're laying eggs so you don't want them to suffer with anything so but that's what what we have left just to finish uh, framing for the uh, sheets do the roof and then just finalize the coop we are exploring idea of adding a rain a collection right here in the back so we can have also independent water for the coop doesn't matter where it is so since roof slopes this way we'll put a gutter at the end of this roof line and bring it down to the collection barrels for the for the rainwater but that's just an idea for now but we'll, we'll see if we manage to get that in yeah we will have another roosting bar here for a second level of nesting boxes that will be sitting right here so they'll jump in to get access to this but this bar will also allow them to jump up to the roosting roosting bars that will be uh, side to side inside the coop so I am inside now and it's uh, quite spacious in here you can um, folks that have come by the farm uh, recently talk about this kind of feeling like a tiny house which <laughs> I guess square footage wise, it, it really uh, likely is, but hopefully should have enough room to give us the expansion space that we need for uh, this season and to maintain a healthy flock for our egg layers. The seasons to come, absolutely, so yeah. Time to get to some more work. another day and this is what progress looks like so far. We have able to get the front of the coop mostly wrapped. Uh, we mentioned before that we were going to be using uh, this right here, white panels uh, for the coop, but then we realized that we had these panels from friends of ours and so this was free material and it was the perfect size, it didn't need to be cut or anything, so we decided to go ahead and use what we had on hand first and then we will move over to the panels that we had to purchase and then uh, using the white to finish off with wrapping around the sides. We also have some different color panels that we're gonna use for the roof. So the roof will be a mixture of a uh, gray or blue and then some of these white panels as well. So Dragon will come on around and show you that between last night and this morning, we were also able to complete, I would say probably 95% of the framing might need to still secure some of these boards up, but adding some boards on the side to give us some place to drill in the side panels when we get to that. Same thing for the top. We made a design decision to place our roofing boards uh, flat instead of up this way, down this way, uh, because it'll be easy for us to be able to get up there and to fasten them down. If you were building a house or something else or something that needed to pass inspection, might have been a different decision, but that's not what we're worrying about here. We're worrying about being able to get the job done and make sure that it's functional. And for us, the way that we have this here uh, will meet all of our needs. I think that's about it for right now. Um, most of the intense work is starting to build up. The more intense stuff now will be hauling these panels up top onto the roof and getting those secured. So that's the next phase that we're going to get into now.
coupe is 95% wrapped in all metal. A sheet, uh, sheet metal is all uh, done all the way around. Only thing that we have left to do is on this side above nesting boxes. A friend of ours is giving us some uh, clear plastic panels and this all is going to be covered in the clear plastic panels. So in the winter time it's going to be nice to give them some additional light and also heat as well for winter time during the, during the day. Uh, we might put summertime we might put some shade cloth over it just to make sure it doesn't get overheated inside. But all it's left to do now, we already have these panels for the doors here. Doors are going to open this way, down. And then now all the work that's left, it's going to be inside roosting bars and all that stuff. We are now going to focus on work inside uh, roosting bars. We're going to have seven roosting bars on either side of the uh, doors. We can go on up in there. Yep. Oh, you sure? Yeah, we have steps now. <laughs> I bought the steps over today. <laughs> that was hurting, climbing in and out of this yesterday. Well, you know, for short people, this is uh, <laughs> all right, but somebody when it's six, all right. six, three. <laughs> so the roosting bars are going to go this way. They're going to be about 11 inches apart. We can fit seven roosting bars this way and on that side seven roosting bars there and then we're going to have a lattice climbing up here and there will be a roosting bar in here for hens to climb into the upper level even though they can kind of jump up we're going to make it convenient for them and just put a roosting bars here to climb up here. This roosting bars will also help them uh, climb onto the main roosting bars. These roosting bars are going to be about four feet up and they're just going to be laying on uh, two by four right here. They're not going to be screw it, screwed in so whenever we need to clean this up we can just remove these roosting bars, clean the floor up and put them back on so instead of screwing them in. So that's about it. We'll, we'll bring you definitely back once roosting bars are in and all the work is done. So see you soon. Good morning everybody. It is a moving day for these lovely ladies. Chicken coop is completely done. We got back door fastened, roof, everything is all done. On the other side, we show the door on the other side? Uh, yeah. We have not. We have not. Let's show the door too. Oh, but let's finish. So everybody's loaded in last night. We took our time last time to count everybody mark everybody who was who's two years old and one year old so everybody's marked to be count all the hands how many did we have uh total yeah 80, 83 83 plus nine roosters I believe something like that we have another 30 hands on the other side and this side doors are completely done two doors we have big doors are for us and small doors here are for chickens. I'm gonna try to not let them in, uh, let them out right now. Take a peek. We just fed everybody, so we have feed and water. They're gonna spend here next 24 hours. We're not gonna let them out today, so they get used to their environment. Ladies are already getting busy over there in the nesting boxes, the laying eggs. We're going to move them out to the pasture right now or a garden area. And like I said, they're going to spend here 24 hours and we're going to let them out tomorrow morning. Our hands, what we decided to do, it's going to be 
along our fence line underneath our pines. This is our least fertile area here uh, due to these pines. That's why we're looking to remove these pines hopefully soon. Uh, you could have seen last year when we grew, everything that we grew here, anything that was closer to the pines did not grow more than a foot tall. Even the sunflowers that were seven foot tall on this side and foot and a half tall on this side. So we want to make sure that this area gets a nice amount of fertilizer. So we're going to start moving hands throughout our garden area, market garden area uh, to begin with and slowly move it to the big pasture. So then, like I mentioned earlier, they're going to spend the day inside the coop today. Luckily, it's a nice cloudy day, so it's not going to be too hot for them. Uh, and tomorrow, we're going to come back and let everybody out and see them have fun at all this grass and grubs and stuff. So, see you guys tomorrow for the final reveal. Good morning, everybody. Today is the day. I feel like we've been saying that for a while, though, but this really is it. No more dress rehearsals. Dragon is filling up all of the feeding troughs for this morning. The chickens are getting their first exit from our mobile coop today. So first things first is to make sure that everything is set up for everybody. We have one, two, three, four troughs. And we have one, two, three, four, five watering stations for everybody out here as well. Uh, it's going to be, I think, quite the show to see these chickens because we've not seen them come out. Remember, we had our own flock in there, uh, and then we added an additional 100 hens yesterday. So that is close to 200 chickens that are coming out of this coop once we open the door this morning. All right, here we go. Big show time, we think. <laughs> They don't really know what to do now. Maybe we need to open the big door so everybody can come out for the first time. Just so that they know this is the exit point. All right, here we go. We have liftoff. Everybody else, are you coming? This is it. This is your moment. All right, there's Kyle. Kyle is our head rooster right here. The black Astralorp. He took the leap. There's Hans, our German Billefelder rooster. They're making their way out. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free. Operation Eggmobile. I think it's a success, Kevin. What do you think? I agree. You can see hens are quite happy. They're roaming around. They barely even eating their own feed. Everybody's actually 90% of the hens are just roaming around, getting at a pile of some, the mulch, dirt, grass. <laughs> I'm gonna leave a nice and 
happy life here. We're gonna keep this. So they are in uh, 90 by 90 enclosure. We have two electric fences, but near one electric fences that are 185 or 86 feet long. Uh, from each side is about 92 feet long. Uh, so this is about 8,000 square feet for how many hens we have? About 200 hens. Uh, so they're going to spend here about next week or 10 days. Then we're just going to move the whole thing, one section down, and so on around the garden and pasture. That way they're going to spread any of this mulch and fertilize the ground along the way. That's going to do it for this video. We thank you all for tuning in to watch and see another one of our kind of milestone projects here at the farm. This coop will hopefully serve us for years to come and will definitely be beneficial for us here at the farm, not only for our chickens, but also for our pastures. Most definitely. Thank you again, guys, for coming along, supporting us through all of our ventures. We have plenty more to come this season. We have big plans for the farm. Stay tuned and we'll see you guys soon. All right, see you soon. Bye. Sometimes you need to go and take a step back to see the truth.